Hey everybody, I'm out here on this little wagon again, and we fixed the problem with the vapor lock, which would occur um, anytime there was hot temperature out there by fixing one of the injectors. However, showing evidence of two conditions, we figured that fixed one, and now um, I have figured out that this little $20 and under item, so 25 in some places, is the cause of a majority of Ford products having a no start condition, either very cold or very hot. So looking back on the service records of this little car, it also had some cold no start conditions. And we went and checked it out and I went ahead and used a multimeter and you probably don't have to. I mean, this is literally cheap enough that every few years if you had to replace it and it's easy to do, that it wouldn't hurt you. But this is a temperature sensor. It's not a temperature sending unit. So now let me explain the difference. Um, down here, there is two items. There is one that is a temperature sending unit. You see my finger on that? And one next to it that is a temperature sensor. So this one here is a temperature sending unit and this one is a temperature sensor. Now the temperature sensor, if it's at a parameter, your computer will not tell your fuel injectors to start. It won't tell them to fire. So you'll get spark, you will get your turnover. Um, you'll know if your timing belt is broke because your RPM meter, your gauge won't go. Secondary, if you don't have an RPM gauge, you can literally just take the contacts of a fluorescent bulb and put them on both sides of your spark plug wire. Just a cheap little, you know, the little battery powered fluorescent bulbs that you can buy um, for uh, like a little camp light. You can put that on both sides of your wire and it'll flicker if you have spark. So most people probably don't know that little secret. And you're gonna have spark, you're gonna have fuel, you'll be able to go over, and in this one's case, this is an Escort with a two liter, and even the Ford Ranger, four liter, the 5.4 Tritons, the 4.6 um, uh, modular motors, mod motors, I guess they call them. All of those have this because all of those use just a simply basic reprogrammed same OBD2 computer and not much changes unless it's a limited version like a Lincoln Continental or something because it has an engine and system like from the Jaguar, I believe, or they're akin to each other in parts. So. This is your problem. Um, you'll go over here to your fuel rail, and if you have a Schrader valve on your fuel, fuel, you can just take a screw or something, push in, and fuel will spray out. Don't do it when it's real hot. But you can just barely touch it, and some fuel will come out, and you'll know it's got fuel pressure. So, you'll hear the pump kick on, and most of these cars, you can take the gas cap off and have somebody turn on the key while you listen, and you'll hear it hum and then shut off. That's pressurized, that's correct. But in this one's case, here it is. So what I'm going to do, and your car will be different depending on the Ford model, is I'm going to go ahead and remove this intake system. And these are 19 millimeter, of course most everything metric now, 19 millimeter. You'll need an open end wrench because it's hard to get, you can't get a socket on it. So when I pull all of this off, I'll get access to it because a socket won't fit. Even though it looks like it should, it won't fit in most cases. Some of them it will, so you'll be able to make a judgment call on that but 19 millimeter wrench. This one here is the better quality than the Motorcraft. This one here is better than the Motorcraft. So you don't want to make a judgment call and you're always a Motorcraft guy, but the BWD fail less than the Motorcraft. And the Duralast, I wouldn't even waste a dollar on it. Um, this one here will last you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this off, like I said, and I'll show you how I'm getting it out and what it does. And the car right now uh, came home, sat for 12 minutes, and would not restart. I checked it. It should have ohmed out around 6 ohms. It was just an outrageous number. And I waited about 2 hours, came back, and it did. So that means the thermal click disc that's inside of here that's making contact um, at the point where it's going to shut your engine down for overheat is doing it prematurely. Okay, and then you know if your engine sets, all the temperature rises to the top of the block in the side of the head, and this will stick in place until it gets real cold to where there's so much tension on the little spring in there that it'll pop finally pop back, and the car will start. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get this replaced and show you how it's done. Okay, now I've got everything cleared out of the way and you will notice they are definitely two different types of sensors. This one here being your temperature gauge on your dash, this one here reporting information to your computer. So they'll be in different locations. On the Ford Escort, this is where they're at. A Mazda Protégé, a Ford Concours, uh, Mercury Mystiques, um, all of them with these style engines, two liter, 1.9s, they're pretty much the same. Um, they'll be on the end of the head where your water jacket is going to your thermostat housing, okay? So that's where you're gonna look for them. And don't worry, unplug them both, okay? Uh, to get them out of your way. And I've also unplugged the coil to get it out of my way so I don't hit it with the wrench. And because these parts, once your car's a little older, will get brittle and you don't wanna break them. Now, reaching in here, I'm just going to take it and remove it. So you'll see where I'm getting close to that other fitting there. I don't want to hit it because I'll break that other unit. Don't want to do it. So be very careful. These are on about 20 pounds of torque is about the resistance that I'm getting out of this, okay, to get it off of here. Now, as long as you don't take your radiator cap off and as long as your system isn't hot, pressurized, you can do a quick pull that out, throw the other one in, a few drips, a little bit of more, uh, radiator fluid will come out and that's it. So Now, I've got mine loose enough so that I don't have to lose a lot of coolant and have this one ready. And we're going to go ahead and do the swap out. You'll see me just go down in here and turn it out. You can see a little bit of fluid coming out, and I'll just go quick and put the other one in. Like I said, do it when it's cool. Sorry, got Teflon on this one. You'll see the old one here. You can see the coloration on that, and that's factory original. So now I probably lost a grand total of about a quarter of a cup of coolant, no big deal. Uh, your reservoir will cover that. And there it is. Pour you some fresh water in around that to rinse that area out of the coolant so you don't have to smell that burning glycol when the engine gets hot. Now we're gonna tighten this back up and fire the car up. This one here. Is, this one here is still in a no start position. It has not decided to let loose, but I can test this and probably show you that it's a dead contact point. So if I tap it, there it went, it clicked. That's my problem right there. So the one I'm using, I showed you there at the beginning of the video, the link down below, and I'm going to also be replacing my coil while I'm at it because when you're already in the hole like this and you've got all this going on and you know what it's like to have one of these coil packs, I'm going to also be replacing my coil. So this down here I believe is a 6 millimeter on these Escorts and Concours and I believe Mystiques and Tracers and Mazda Protégés. And this is the coil. I'll put a link down there for it too. This is a better quality coil. Now, this Master Pro is made by six different brands. I'll put you a link to two or three of them, and you can get them cheaper than O'Reilly's because they want like 45, 50 bucks for this one at O'Reilly's, and CarQuest is like 60 bucks, and I'm not sure, Advance or something, they're all high dollar, but the link I'll put you for that coil is probably about 30, so same thing. So, all right, same and, and same warranty on them, one year warranty, and if you get it from eBay, they don't even want it back, they'll just refund your money. That's the easy way. So, all right, guys, this is easy. You can do it. No start condition. You're turning the key. Nothing happens. You check spark. You got spark. You check your timing belt. It's not broke. Your, your timing belt's not broke because you see your your uh, uh, your RPM gauge moving as you as you're cranking. Um, you look over here and you see that your your sensor, your crank position sensor, uh, would not uh, give you any feedback if it was bad. So the results is that the computer was told not to keep the run engine running because the heat rose, concentrated, and this was wore out. This is your temperature sensor, not your temperature sending unit. And that's about, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 million Fords 
Ford products and Lincoln and Mercury use this item. So look at this first before you panic. Okay, and now you can see that everything's been buttoned back up, put back together, the new parts are on. Daniel's gonna go ahead and fire it up and make sure that the problem was fixed because that was a completely defective sensor. And there we go. So we have spark, we have ignition, we have fuel, we have everything, and we have the little sensor there replaced. Good as new. So no more sitting there waiting for it to cool down, which somebody didn't like the other day. Um, that's easy. Ford cars, lots of them have the sensor. If you got spark, like I said numerous times in this video, if you got spark, if you got fuel, and your timing belt ain't broke, go to them sensors or go to them coils first because the coil could be weak or the sensor could be telling the computer not to shoot off those injectors. All right, guys, y'all be good, man. We're done.